So you just bought your brand new Mac and now you need to transfer all your files and apps from your old Mac onto your new one. Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you about the different ways that you can actually do that which one I think is the best and why, and then I'm gonna show you exactly how it works. And even if you're not computer savvy, don't worry. This process is very easy, and if you follow my video, I'm confident that anyone will be able to do this. And even though we're using Mac Studios in this example, you can use this process on pretty much any other Mac. Now for context, I'm going to be transferring my files and apps from my old Mac Studio M1 Ultra to my brand new Mac Studio M3 Ultra. Both of these Macs are also on different software versions, so I'll be coming from an older software to a newer. And if you are going to be doing just like I am going from an older software version to a newer software version, just keep in mind that some of your apps may not work on the newer version until they're updated. Now the Migration Assistant is actually capable of transferring files and apps using three different connection methods. One is Wi-Fi, which is probably going to be the slowest, Two is actually using Ethernet, which can be a little bit faster than the Wi-Fi. And the third option, which I think is the best and can be the fastest, is actually using a USB Type-C cable. Now, like I mentioned before, there are three different ways you can actually do this. One is using a startup disk. And to use a startup disk, you would have had to have made this external drive or a drive that you had in your older Mac set up to be your startup disk, and then you would connect it to your newer, newer Mac. And I don't think there are a lot of people out there actually using this option. So we're not gonna be doing that in this video today. The second way is to restore backup from Time Machine. Now on my uh, Mac Studio, I have an external drive set up for my Time Machine backups. So I can very easily just unconnect that from my old Mac and reconnect it to my new one, and then just restore the backup from there. It usually works pretty good. Another reason why I like this method is because you don't have to connect both of your systems up to a monitor so you can visually see what's going on. You just need that one external drive and your brand new Mac. And the third option I'm going to show you is a direct USB cable connection from your old Mac to the new one, again using the Migration Assistant. This option can take a little bit more setup, maybe more than some people have, because you do have to have both the systems connected up to a monitor so you can visually see what's going on on each system, and you have to click on different things on each system as well. My preferred method is using the Migration Assistant with the Time Machine backup because it's super easy to use, especially if you have an external drive with your Time Machine backup already on it. All you need to do is connect your brand new Mac to your monitor, unhook that USB drive from your, from your old Mac, plug it into the new one, and restore the backup from the USB drive. It's very easy to do. You can do it during the setup process of your new Mac, or you can actually go into your Mac, set it up, and then come back and do the Migration Assistant later if that's what you want to do. All right, so the first option I'm going to show you is using the direct cable connection and Migration Assistant to transfer everything from your old Mac onto your new one. Now, the one thing I will tell you is you want to make sure that you use a Thunderbolt cable that is at least as capable as your lowest port, meaning my MacBook Pro has a Thunderbolt 4 port, so you want to use at least a Thunderbolt 4 capable cable. The new Mac Studio M3 Ultra has the capability of a Thunderbolt 5, which you can also use. It might be a little bit more expensive, but at least you want to be able to use the lowest capable port, which again is the Thunderbolt 4. This is just to show you that you can transfer from a totally different Mac onto a whole new Mac system. So you can see here we have the Mac Studio all ready to go. So we're going to select English, United States. Everything looks good here. Continue. You can check your accessibility options if you need right now. We're going to say not now though. We do have a software update, which I will do later. So I'll just say update later, data and privacy, continue. So now we're into the Migration Assistant on the new Mac. And you want to make sure that you select from a Mac, Time Machine Backup or Startup Disk, and not the one from Windows PC. So that is all set up. Now you want to go onto your other Mac that you're going to transfer from. We're going to go into our Launchpad, go into Other, and we're going to select Migration Assistant. We'll click continue, put in our password, 
it's going to log off of all your applications. And then on your old Mac, you want to say to another Mac. Click continue. It'll search for the new Mac. And then on your new Mac, just hit continue. And it should show up as you can see right here. So Tony's MacBook Pro, we're going to select that. Hit continue. Then you want to make sure that the numbers on both screens match up. We'll click continue on the old Mac. It's going to scan for applications and documents to transfer. All right, so it looks like it's all done scanning. Now you see everything that has been selected for transfer, but you don't have to transfer everything. If you don't want something, you just simply go in here, unselect that. If we click on my name here, you can see there's a whole bunch more uh, files and folders that are going to be transferred. Again, if you if there is something that you don't want transferred, just simply unclick it. So I think that looks pretty good. So we're going to be transferring about 186 gigabytes of data. So once that's done, you can go ahead and click continue. We're going to set our password on our new Mac. It does not have to be the same as your old Mac. We'll click continue and it looks like it's gonna to start to transfer. Now, if you look at the current connection, it says peer-to-peer. -peer. It seems like it's using a Wi-Fi connection instead of our cable. And if we click on connection details, you can see the same thing there. It's, it seems to be selecting the peer-to-peer. -peer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to unconnect our Thunderbolt cable. This, I think, should probably change in just a second. Yeah, so there it just changed. So now we're gonna plug in the Thunderbolt cable back into my new Mac, and hopefully the connection type should change. So you can see now that the current connection has now changed to ethernet. And I looked online and it seems like sometimes the software has trouble differentiating between a cable connection and ethernet because I do not have an ethernet cable connected to either one of these Macs. But you can see now it's chosen the ethernet to unknown on this Mac and that's because it's using these cables. I actually had to change out uh, the white cable I was using for the, the cable that actually came with my Mac Studio. And you can see we're doing about 39 megabytes a second. And as far as time goes, it, look like, it looks like it's going to take an hour and 50 minutes to totally transfer all of my old files onto the new Mac. You can actually see that the megabytes have gone up to about 68, 67 megabytes a second. So it's actually doing a little bit more than it showed on the current connection. So another thing that's interesting, you can see here on the new Mac, the current connection says peer-to-peer. -peer. Uh, but on the old one, it says Ethernet. So I'm not 100% sure why uh, it actually shows that, but it seems to be doing uh, faster than the Ethernet could. And I'd also recommend using a Apple certified Thunderbolt cable because as you saw with the white cable, sometimes uh, it doesn't work. So you can definitely see how it's a little bit more complicated and you might run into some issues using the migration assistant with the direct cable connection. That's why I prefer the Time Machine Restore a little bit better. So we'll come back in a couple hours after this is finished and I'll show you what the Restore looks like on the new Mac. So just disregard that I'm using two cables because this operation only should require one Thunderbolt cable, but because my system is not cooperating and acting the way that it should, I just simply plugged in both these cables in hopes that one of them would actually show the proper connection, but it's not, but it seems to be moving a lot faster than it would as if it was just using the Wi-Fi. So I'm just gonna leave the cables as they are. All right, so the migration has now completed. It took about two hours and 15 minutes to totally complete. So we'll hit done on the MacBook Pro and done on our Mac Studio. And then we'll take a look at what each one of these looks like. So we're not gonna sign in right now. We'll just skip this for the time being. Apple Intelligence, continue. I'll keep the Fire Vault on. Now back, actually, I'm gonna turn, keep that off. Continue. So if we take a look at our launch pad on the MacBook, we can see that's what it looks like there. And then we'll do the same thing on the Mac Studio. So it looks like some things 
are just in uh, some different places. But for the most part, we've got like four pages of applications on the MacBook Pro and we got one, two, three, four on the Mac Studio. So it looks like it might have transferred everything that I had on the MacBook. Now, like I was mentioning before, some of the apps that may be transferred over won't work until they're updated. Like we have the Final Cut Pro here. You can see that it's got the, you know, the not working symbol on it. So if you run into things like that, you'll just have to update that app and then it should work perfectly fine on your brand new Mac, provided that the app has been updated to work on the newer software version. So everything looks to be in here that I did have on the MacBook Pro. So that worked out pretty good. So we'll open up one of our apps here just to kind of see what we're running into. And there is the application. Allow, login expired, skip this version. See, so it, there is a newer version of this application, but it's still working uh, from the older app on the newer software. So you can update it if you want, you don't have to, but just to show you that the app was working. And if we take a look at the dock here, you can see all the applications that are on the newer Mac versus our older one here. And they're pretty much the same minus, you know, one or two things like the uh, light burn is a question mark over here, which I'll just have to update as well as the final cut. But everything else is pretty much down there that was on my MacBook Pro. So now that we've seen how the migration assistant works with different hardware as well as software using the cable, now I'm going to restore a backup from my Time Machine backup that was from the Mac Studio M1. So my old Mac Studio was using an external drive for its Time Machine backup, so all you need to do is then disconnect it from your old Mac, plug it into your new one, and then we can do a restore from that Time Machine backup. It's very easy and it works very well. So let me show you really quick how to set up a backup on your old machine. All you need to do is get an external drive uh, that uses USB Type-C. You're gonna plug that into the Mac that you want to set up the Time Machine backup on. Then you're gonna go into Time Machine. We're gonna set up Time Machine. Then say Add Backup Disk. And you'll notice that the external drive that I've plugged in is showing here. Then all you need to do is set up disk and it'll set it up for a time machine backup and actually create a backup of your drive that you can use to then restore on your brand new Mac. All right, so I've reset my Mac and we're going to restore the backup from the time machine. So we'll go through this process again. All right, so here we are again at the Migration Assistant. I've already reset my Mac Studio all over again so we can do the process uh, fresh. Again, here I have my backup from my time machine of my old Mac Studio. And again, the reason why I love this is because you don't have to have both of your systems hooked up at the same time. So you can you know, go through each one. All you really need from your old system is your external drive with the time machine backup on it. So again, we're gonna select from a Mac time machine backup or startup disk. We'll plug in our external drive with our time machine backup on it. And we're gonna say continue. It should pop up here really quick. And there, as you can see, our time machine backup just popped up, so we'll click on that. And just so you guys know that this drive is capable of doing 40 gigabits per second. So it's going to be a pretty quick transfer, much, much faster than it was on the MacBook Pro. So we'll select this, go to continue. All right, so it looks like it found one terabyte of, of information. So we have, we still have 808 gigabytes free. So I'm just gonna transfer over everything that I've got. So we'll click continue. We're gonna set our password up on our new Mac Studio. Again, it can be whatever you want. It doesn't have to be the same one that was on your old Mac. We'll hit continue. So now it's gonna start the transfer and I'll show you how much faster the transfer is going to be versus when we did it on the MacBook Pro. So you can see as of right now, it's going to take about an hour and 25 minutes to totally finish the transfer. And we're at about, 
it's still raising 956 megabytes a second or past one gigabyte you can see it's still climbing so you can already see how much faster the transfer rate is using the time machine backup so we're at about 1.4 1.5 gigabytes a second and it's only going to take about 47 minutes to totally complete whereas the transfer from the cable took about 2 hours and 15 minutes so you can see it's already moving way faster and the transfer rate is still climbing we're at we're at 2 gigabytes a second now so we'll come back in about 30 minutes and we'll see if it's transferred all of our applications and documents onto the new Mac Studio. All right, so our time machine backup has now completed. I think it took about 30 minutes total. It was really quick. So we'll go to done, log in. All right, welcome to Mac. Continue. And here are all my applications, my files. So there's my ExpressVPN. We'll go and check our files here. So. It does look like my files have been placed in here as well. Let's see our documents. There's my documents. Go into About This Mac. Here's my Mac Studio. You can see it is the M3 Ultra. A whole bunch of things just popped up on my notifications. <laughs> so the same thing that happened with the MacBook Pro happened with my Mac Studio update. You can see that my Final Cut Pro uh, just needs to be updated from the older version, but I do have my uh, Photoshop's. All of my other applications on the bottom bar here are here. And it seems like everything else is pretty much set up. So that was super quick, very easy. And again, that's why that's my favorite option for restoring a backup on a new machine. Now, like I mentioned before, you can always set up your Mac brand new and then do the Migration Assistant once your Mac is already set up, just like I have here. And you do it the same way we did it before. All you need to do is go into your launch pad, go into Other, Migration Assistant, and then you can start the migration now. So you don't necessarily have to make the decision when you're setting up your Mac. You can just set up your Mac and then come back and do the migration afterwards if you want to. So those were a couple ways that you could transfer your files and applications from your old Mac onto your new one. And as you saw, it's really nice because you don't have to even have the same hardware to do it. Now, as you saw from the video, we did run into some problems using the direct cable connection with my MacBook Pro. But in reality, if everything was working the way that it should have, that cable connection should have been pretty much just as fast as the restore we did with the Time Machine backup. But things happen and things don't run exactly as planned. That's why I like the Time Machine option better because it just seems to work a lot smoother and you don't have to have both of your systems set up at the same time to do the migration. I'd also really like to know if you guys use this video to transfer any of your files over and what options works best for you. Let me know in the comments below. But I do hope you guys enjoyed the video and you took something from it. And if you did and you liked the video, let me know by hitting the like button and consider subscribing. Thank you all for watching. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next one.